Hello, welcome to Functional Fun. I'm Mike Watkins, second year student here at Cox College. And I'm Caitlin Wilson. I am a first year student here at Cox College. And this is our first uh, recording uh, filming of our podcast here. And um, I just wanted to give a shout out to all the countries that have been uh, stopping by or stopping in and listening to us on uh, any platforms, whether it be Spotify, Google, we're trying to get on Apple, we'll see if we can get there. Um, but obviously we have the United States, uh, we have the UK, Norway, and the Philippines. So thank you all for tuning in. And if you have any questions at all, we have a new um, email that you can reach us at. It's a functional fun MSOT podcast at gmail.com. And I'll post that uh, somewhere where it can be viewed and accessed. Um, also, Dr. Morrow is uh, one of the counselors on campus. Um, she offers a um, service of, uh, you can stop in and have telehealth with her in terms of different uh, counseling um, attributes that she gives to st different students. It started this semester, so I've personally been using it and she's great um, anytime that you have issues with uh, you know, testing or getting into you know, different programs or just life. She's a great resource, so um, we'll get into what we have today. All right, so today we have a panel of OT students, uh, first year OT students, who have had careers before they came to OT school, and they're just gonna talk about how um, those careers have helped them uh, go through this whole process. So if you guys wanna introduce yourselves. Sure. sure. Here's the mic. Oh, and wave to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kelsey, I'm a first year student. My name's Courtney, and I'm a first year student as well. My name is Nathan, and I'm also a first-year student. All right, well, Kelsey, uh, what's your background, and what skills do you have that could be helpful with OT? Um, I got my undergrad in exercise science in 2016, um, and then I immediately became um, a certified personal trainer, and then became certified in um, teaching yoga, and um, I did like a pool therapy, um, class and then I got certified to like run a pool um, like the maintenance side so I did um, arthritis, arthritis aquatics classes and then taught yoga and then um, personal trained all in an independent living facility so I worked with older adults um, in a gym setting that would come to us before or after therapy so we got to see them like you know, in a different, um, just in a different perspective. So definitely like using that uh, therapeutic use itself and um, building rapport, um, you know, all things that we have to do when we're working with um, patients in a therapy setting. So just kind of getting to do that um, in a bit of a more relaxed setting. Um, yeah, just building people skills and that's something that we cover in that first foundational course, uh, therapeutic, use, therapeutic Use of Self, uh, in that fall semester. So anyone who's wondering if they don't have those skills uh, necessarily refined, um, we go into that very much in depth um, in that first semester. Um, do you feel like there's any skills that you haven't um, honed in on yet that are like kind of lingering, like maybe you're not so confident in going into their next semester or going into field work? You know, I don't want to be like cocky or anything, but I do feel very prepared. Like, I am also like an older, like student. So I think like building your confidence, you know, through different um, careers and different jobs before, like experiences, um, and then kind of putting yourself in, um, you know, difficult situations, like just doing the difficult stuff um, can help. Yeah, it's like very hands-on too, so yeah. it definitely helps. Yeah, because I mean, they're older adults, like people in general don't like to exercise usually, and older adults even more so do not like to exercise. <laughs> so like trying to like really build the rapport, like most of the time when people come see me, they just want to chat. Right. And then while they were chatting, they'd be doing some leg presses, or <laughs> we do some like, 
we do anything. Like, and then we would build a plan around something that they wanted, so it was very client-centered. Um, and then around their weaknesses, too. Um, so using that holistic approach, too. Nice. Awesome. And Courtney? So I've had like kind of a long road to here. Um, in 2013, I graduated with my bachelor's in psychology and then another one as well in gerontology. And so that's just the study of aging from the socio sociological aspects to the biological. And then um, I worked as like a social worker and then an activities department for a while and I just really wasn't satisfied with what I was doing. So I was doing research and I found out about occupational therapy and I looked into areas around Springfield for schooling and at the time when I went back to school there weren't any accredited master's programs but there was an occupational therapy assistant program at a local community college here and I thought why not Sorry. so I graduated with that in 2018 and I've been working in a skilled nursing facility with older adults since then, and then I decided to go back to school to have a little more autonomy in my practice. So you got like a whole toolkit that you <laughs> kind of pulled from, right? Being a I guess, yeah. Uh, occupational therapy assistant. Yeah. Uh, I've never been around CODIS in California, and that's probably a thing, but I saw more like job opportunities for physical therapy assistants or aides. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of my background. Um, so can you speak to a little bit of like the difference uh, as it, it would be um, being an aide? PTA or something like that? It's just, it's the same difference as I think being um, the difference between a PT and OT. It's just their uh, frame of reference that they're coming from. They're coming more of that biomechanical model, rehabilitative model. I don't want to say they're not client centered because they are, but it's just a different frame of mind. And um, depending on where you're working, you're going to see more PTAs in like a rehabilitative setting. But if you want to work in a variety of settings, OT is definitely got its talents in those for sure and so um and i'm older like kelsey and so i think just having life experience and stuff really has helped us hone in on our skills as therapists and being able to kind of ride it as we go because it's a very stressful time and um recognizing that we have to reach the short-term goals without becoming overwhelmed with the long-term goal of graduating and so like just getting to that and just know that Trust the process. It's really hard, but and you are you, do it. Are you a, would you consider yourself to be a, um, a strong test taker or standardized test taker? Personally, I'm, I need the snail's pace. Give me everything like a year in advance, and I need to do, go very systematic about my approach to be confident enough to take a test. Um, being that you're a code and you took that exam, mm -hmm. how was that your, your experience that? It wasn't, I mean, I, my experience was fine. I'm an independent studier, so I just kind of made a plan. I set the date, I signed up for my test, and I paid for it, and so <laughs> that's a lot of money to be paying for something, so I I set up my times to study, and I think I studied for about four weeks. I took a week off after I graduated just to rest my mind, and then I studied for about four weeks, uh, four to five hours a day, five days a week, and that included like just taking practice tests and reading rationale as to why I got it wrong, and then just really kind of honing in on that. But our uh, my OTA program really set us up for success with that, and my understanding is that this program does that as well. And so test taking is hard, but it's something you have to do. And so just learning your independent study style, um, recognizing what does and doesn't work, and then getting rid of the fluff, basically. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Thank you, and Nathan, how is your background? Got you ready for, first of all, this is our first male besides me being on the podcast, yeah. so thank you. <laughs> yeah, males in OT are kind of a minority. We're a rare breed, um, so I will be signing autographs later. Um, so I have kind of always worked a job. Um, I just have always found, kind of like what Courtney said along study strategies, I, uh, I'm a creature of habit, and so I, I've always found that I've done better in school when I've had like a consistent schedule and like I can go from, I can sequence tasks and uh, I feel more obligated, I guess, to fill spare time with meaningful study time. So like I, I take the most of that time. So I've always had a job and I've done a bunch of different things. I was a bank teller right out of high school. I worked at a movie theater um, shortly. I was um, an assistant branch manager of a bank. Um, and I, I think my first job in healthcare was really working at uh, the patient access building or the department for uh, Mercy here in Springfield. And um, 
there I got kind of a, a really good view of like what happens at the back end. Basically, how do the doctors and therapists um, get reimbursed? You know, how do we build to insurance correctly? How do we file things? How do we make sure that everything is up to date? And then how do we fix things if they're wrong for patients, which was a really big thing. Um, from there, I left for a little bit, um, and I was at a center that dealt with um, autism and autism diagnoses, and um, I kind of became disillusioned with healthcare for a while there. I was very frustrated. Um, what I saw were very woefully underprepared and under-coordinated uh, staff, and so it was really to the detriment of some of these patients, and so it was it was hard um, to watch that, and it, it wasn't a good match. I probably should have done a little bit more research, so I left there very quickly, and I went to Mercy, where I was essentially a restorative tech on the general trauma floor, um, and that was a really good position for me. I got to work directly with the PTs, directly with the OTs, the PTAs, the CODAs. Um, I got to work with some of the physicians. I got to work with uh, some of the trauma directors, and then I got to work with the orthotists, um, who were fitting people for braces and stuff like that. And so I was doing a lot of therapeutic work, but I couldn't call myself a therapist, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, all of that, all the while, I was getting my undergrad in uh, exercise science, kind of like what Kelsey said. And um, it was a lot of like exercise physiology, principles of strength and conditioning. Um, we had adapted physical education and adapted activity classes for people with physical and cognitive impairments. And there were a lot of psychology courses that talked about like the process of change and change talk and um, kind of like the psychology of, of that. So it really prepped me. Um, I, I, Cox was really the only school I applied for. I didn't even want to apply to, not that I didn't want to, that's, um, I just didn't consider it because Cox was always my first choice. And so I just kind of went full send with it, so. Nice, well we do have an array of students and uh, your background Caitlin is exercise science right. also mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> actually at the same place uh, Kelsey went so oh, no way nice I didn't even know that mm -hmm. well in, in my cohort we have people who are like psych majors or like linguistic majors so I just there's no um, obstacle that can be too large um, or overlooked when it comes to not having necessarily the skills or background because even though you're not a coda or you're not you haven't worked in a hospital being an OT means that you can you know, look at every single angle that hasn't been necessarily looked at for treatments so yeah and I think it's good to have that variety in those perspectives like in your cohorts you can talk and you can like learn all these things that they have to offer that you might have never like had a perspective like that mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would just say to anybody listening, you know, even not even necessarily for OT program, but they're involved with higher education, you know, in any capacity. Um, I think one of our favorite sayings around here is, you know, you can do hard things, and I think that's probably something we picked up from you guys. But um, I I got married really young. I got married when I was 21 years old, um, pretty much at the beginning or like middle of my undergrad experience, and so I got married right as I was like planning and prepping for all of his graduate work and stuff like that and uh, you know again trying to work a job trying to maintain that relationship with my spouse and trying to uh, you know do well in school to get recognition and, and to get where I am now um, you know you absolutely can't do it it's really tough but you you can do it and so these unique experiences you know use those to your advantage I, I think I wrote about like three different jobs that I had in my my personal statement and and I thought it was pretty good so yeah definitely well and that that doing the hard thing, that's, that kind of ties into a, our wrap up uh, quote here. It's from uh, Jim Valvano um, in, in the uh, wake of March Madness. Uh, if you don't know who Jim Valvano, yeah, Jimmy V, the Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research, tying it back into the medical model. Um, don't give up, don't ever give up. So I thank you all for being here today and uh, we'll see what the next episode brings. Thank you.